Maddie's best friend, Emma, is getting married to Paul. Maddie is secretly in love with Paul, but her path keeps crossing with the annoying James. This is a story about what happens when wishes come true. The press is gathered at the book reading event of famous Irish author, Paul Kennedy. Maddie, his editor, is as starstruck by him as the others. While trying to get to him on time, she loses her scarf. She still confidently walks ahead to greet Paul. He is glad to see her, but steps up to answer a few questions. He gives Maddie the credit for being a great editor, and claims they achieved this book together. He asks her to meet inside, and wants to talk about something important. A reporter wonders if a special woman in his life inspired his story. He claims he doesn't want to spill secrets, and makes everyone laugh. Maddie's mother, Rosemary, is a school principal. She calls her from work when she's unable to order something online. Maddie is worried because she arrived late at the venue. She also hasn't told anyone about her feelings for Paul yet. Even her best friends, Emma and Heather, are in the dark. But Maddie thinks she has given Paul a lot of hints. She's encouraged by the way he looks at her when they work. She thinks he's going to confess his feelings too. Emma and Heather are proud of Maddie. But Emma thinks Paul is good looking, and that Maddie has been hiding him from them. She has been working with him for a year, but Maddie pretends she just likes his work. Heather still thinks Maddie's name should be on the cover, since she practically wrote his whole book. Maddie doesn't care for that recognition, because Paul has talked her up to the publisher. When Emma asks more questions about Paul, Maddie leaves for her secret talk with him. He claims to be nervous about the reading. But Maddie is sure people will love the great story. Paul knows the story is great because Maddie changed the plot. He thinks she balances him out, and they make a great team. He holds her hands and suggests they should take their relationship to the next level. Just when she gets excited, he admits he wants to work with her on his next book. He knows she wants to write her own novel, but asks her to postpone it. By putting her in the spot, he convinces Maddie to agree. On the way to the bathroom, Emma bumps into Paul. She explains she's a stylist at Bergdorf's, and is sampling the new lashes. They joke about how bad they are, but Paul offers to help. He adjusts her lash, and Maddie notices a vibe between them. She steps in to remind Paul they're getting late. Paul keeps exchanging looks with Emma during the reading. After signing a book for a fan, he asks how they know each other. They're friends from school, and Emma brags about being a great reader. Maddie gets irritated, because she is the reader from their group. Paul offers to sign Emma's book, and wants to show her the lake near his family's house one day. Emma had a great time, and thinks she shares a connection with Paul. Maddie doesn't want her to take it seriously, but he has left Emma his number with the signed copy. Maddie still assures herself it's just a number, and not a proposal. A few months later, Heather and Maddie are traveling to Ireland for Paul and Emma's wedding. They're all waiting for their luggage, and Emma has too many suitcases. Maddie spots her bag and starts going after it. An English traveler, James, confirms his availability for a job on the phone. He and Maddie pick up the suitcase at the same time, and fight for it. They're both sure it's their suitcase, but James thinks she's trying to steal it. He asks her to see the tag, but she's confident. When the bag bursts open, she realizes her mistake. She apologizes, but he claims it could have happened to anyone. Maddie is reporting her lost luggage when Paul comes to check on her. He thanks Maddie for changing his life by introducing him to Emma. Maddie can't find any cabs, so she takes the bus. James knows the driver, Billy, and comes to sit next to her. He wonders if she managed to steal any more bags. James is a nature photographer, but his job is tough when everyone has a camera on their phones. She shares that she's in Ireland for a wedding, and he jokes about her catching the bouquet. She gets offended that he assumes she wants to get married. When the bus shakes, Paul's book falls out of her bag. James doesn't like him, and found it a torture to read his last book. She points out that Paul is a best-selling author, but James doesn't think it means he's a good writer. She points out that she edited the book, but James just feels bad for her. Maddie meets Paul's brother, Corey, outside the house. She rants to Heather about the annoying English guy on her ride. Emma tries to butter up Paul's mother, Olivia, by complimenting her china. It's been in the family for generations, and she's very proud of it. When Maddie joins them, Paul's dad, Sean, comes to greet her. But she almost drops an expensive vase, and catches it right on time. More than her luggage, Olivia is worried about Maddie's bridesmaid dress. She thinks Maddie might create an imbalance in the wedding without it. Heather has a crush on Corey, and keeps laughing at all his jokes. Paul has planned a surprise trip for them, so Emma excuses herself to change. Paul's parents love Emma, and think Maddie would be happy for them. James arrives at Murphy's pub, and claims he's there for a week to cover the sheep shearing festival. Murphy's wife is already getting his room ready, and he even gives James his car keys. Murphy thinks James won't find a girl if he keeps traveling. But James doesn't think he's cut out to settle down. Maddie hates how beautiful everything is. The man she loves is marrying her best friend, and she's very irritated. Heather thinks they need to go out and meet guys, because Maddie hasn't dated anyone in a long time. At the picnic, Paul brags about the bridge used by Vikings. They are also surrounded by Lefte, or the lake from Paul's book. Emma wonders about the mystical fairy under the lake in his book. But Maddie knows the fairy is evil and lures men to their demise. They want to do a boat ride, but only have two. Maddie is left out, so she offers to go for a walk instead. 
Maddie explores the area and sits on a bench to chat with her mom. Rosemary keeps asking her to be assertive. Maddie also regrets not telling Paul about her feelings sooner. But she thinks it's too late, and can't exactly tell Paul she wishes to marry him. She loses signal after this statement. A woman appears out of nowhere and asks if she wished for something. She informs her about the wishing chair, and asks Maddie to do it the right way. Maddie doesn't believe in all this, so the woman thinks there's no harm in trying. She asks Maddie to close her eyes and repeat her wish like she means it. When Maddie follows her instructions, nothing dramatic happens. The woman makes a breeze blow in her direction. Maddie wakes up in her bed thinking she had a weird dream. She hears someone in the shower and is surprised to find Paul there. He acts like he belongs and doesn't understand why she is covering her eyes. Her suitcase has also reappeared and she needs to step out of the room. She feels guilty when Emma asks about Paul. When Paul comes out of her room, Emma isn't surprised. She informs him that his mother is looking for him. Paul tries to kiss Maddie, which confuses her. But they have apparently kissed a lot of times in front of Emma. Maddie asks if Emma is excited about the big day. She's more confused when Emma shares her intention of finding some hot men in town. Maddie pulls Heather into her room and asks her to keep a secret from Emma. She claims she had a dream about a lady and a wish she made about marrying Paul. Heather isn't surprised about this or that Paul was in her shower. But Maddie gets confused about the wedding dress in her suitcase, which she apparently picked out with her mom. Heather thinks she's getting pre-wedding jitters. When Maddie looks at her ring, she realizes that she is, in fact, marrying Paul. Olivia can't find a photographer for the wedding, because she scares everyone. People are happy when Maddie enters, and they all love her. She forgets she's supposed to sit next to Paul, and claims she's jet-lagged. When Olivia mentions the wedding cake is too tall for the delivery truck, Maddie suggests getting a smaller cake. Everyone agrees with her again, and it seems to be the magic of the wish. Paul wants to go on a bike ride with Maddie, which she thinks will be tough. She doesn't want to admit she's bad at riding a bike, and tries to keep up with Paul. But she falls right next to the orchard. Emma offers to take the bike from her and rides away with Paul. Olivia has been looking around for Maddie, because it's time for her appointment with the tailor. She already has a wedding dress, but Olivia wants her to wear another one. Olivia's grandmother wore this dress on her wedding day, and it's a tradition in their family. While buying a book, James is told he's the hundredth customer of the week. As a reward, he wins a promotional copy of Paul's new novel. He doesn't want it even if it's free, but the employee puts it in his bag. The lady who granted Maddie's wish puts a cancelled sign on the sheep rearing festival poster. James is very disappointed, because it was his only way of earning money. Maddie hates the dress, but her friends try to reassure her. She decides to wear it just because Paul wants her to. She hears the same woman whisper that she wished for this. She finds her lurking outside the store and runs after her. She claims she's happy with the wish, but the woman's voice in her head doesn't believe it. She chases her down the street, but bumps into James' car and falls on his lap. He doesn't recognize her, and is surprised she knows he doesn't like Paul's books. Maddie realizes they haven't probably met in this reality. Olivia thanks Maddie for finding a photographer. James doesn't want to do the event for Paul, but Olivia offers to pay triple his fee. Olivia shares her expectations about the kind of shoot she wants. Paul's publicist has suggested some PR pictures after the wedding and some Irish backdrops. This will boost sales, since Maddie is his editor too. Olivia asks all three of them to drive around the area the next day to scout for locations. James comments on how convenient it is for Paul that Maddie is his editor too. She asks him to not be snarky, and he apologizes. He is still grateful to her for this gig. She repeats what he told her earlier about this job being difficult because everyone has a camera in their pockets. He is surprised because he says this all the time. Maddie prepares for bed that night feeling proud that she's going to marry Paul. When Paul touches her at night, her first reaction is to attack him. She feels bad about hurting him, but he asks her to just keep a distance. Paul is unable to make it the next day because of the injury. So, Maddie and James are supposed to scout the locations themselves. She explains that she was a freelance writer, which didn't pay well. So, she got a job at a publishing house, where she met Paul. He wasn't clicking with any other editors, so it just seemed right for them. He can tell their opposites, but Maddie doesn't want to believe it. In Desmones, Iowa, Rosemary's clock starts resetting itself. He brings her to a location he knows she will like. She claims she hasn't written her own book, because she doesn't have anything to say. He reminds her that everyone has an opinion, and just need to be brave enough to express it. He brings her to the cliffs of Moher, and is surprised she has heard about it. She makes a James Joyce novel reference, and claims he's her favorite author. James is more impressed with her now. She also loves this location, but they both know it's not Paul's style. She would rather get married here, but she doesn't want to be difficult so close to the wedding. James thinks a bride should be allowed to have a voice at her own wedding. Corey introduces the girls to Finn, who is Paul's groomsman. Emma is worried about Paul's eye, but he doesn't want to explain the story behind it. He's worried about the photos, but Emma has a concealer he can borrow. Finn wants to make a grand entrance, and Paul teases him about stealing his spotlight. Emma wants to help Paul with ice, but he asks her to keep sitting next to him. 
He notices how thoughtful she is, and feels lucky she cares for him. A storm is approaching, and James suggests they should get back soon. Maddie's mom is flying in for the rehearsal dinner the next day. She knows how to handle stressful situations, and Maddie is relieved she will be there. James makes a comment about Ireland's weather, and Maddie understands the Mark Twain reference too. A huge tree has fallen in their path, and it's the only road out. Their only option is to turn around, and he knows about a pub they can go to. He helps her with his jacket in the rain. At the pub, he meets his old friend, Tom O'Callaghan. Tom knows Seamus will take care of the tree in the morning, but he's wasted now. James asks for two rooms for the night, but Maddie panics about spending the night there. As she tries to contact Paul, Tom teases James about Maddie. He hopes a girl has finally settled for him. But he asks Tom to not keep his hopes up since he is the photographer at her wedding. Maddie leaves a message for Paul informing him that she'll have to stay the night. Maddie orders wine because she doesn't like beer. Tom warns her about not mentioning out loud, because it might be considered treason in that pub. James has been coming to Ireland since he was a kid, and it's very special to him. But he doesn't actually have a home, because he keeps traveling. She thinks that must get lonely, but he claims there's some freedom in it. When the topic comes to relationships, he asks her to play darts with him. She can tell he doesn't like talking about himself, because he keeps changing the subject. He teaches her how to throw the dart accurately after a few failed attempts. When she manages to hit the bullseye on the third try, she thinks he's a great teacher. He praises her too, and they share a moment when they come too close. But she reminds him she's getting married in two days, and they move away. Tom hands them their drinks and the keys to their rooms. He offers her his stout, and she ends up liking it. He wants one last dance with her before they call it a night. Rosemary is in a hurry and claims she has a family emergency. She has missed her flight because of a clock malfunction and needs another one. Her attendant turns out to be her student, Allegra. She seems excited and thinks Rosemary needs to go for her Maddie's wedding. But instead of helping her, she starts texting another student. At the Wild Hen Inn, Maddie and James dance all night and have a lot of fun with each other. The car isn't starting in the morning, and Maddie is worried about missing her own rehearsal. Tom suggests they can push the car while he springs the clutch. This works, but they're covered in mud. Olivia is stressed because Rosemary missed her flight, and even Maddie is missing. Heather tries to assure her about how tough it must be with the tree. Maddie and James don't have phone chargers, and she's frustrated about him driving slowly. The priest starts the rehearsal with them as the backup bride. But Maddie comes right on time and takes her place. She explains she's dirty because they came back from the cliffs of Mohar. But Paul thinks of it as a horrible tourist trap. They still start the rehearsal and skip to the part where Paul gets to kiss the bride. Just before they're about to kiss, Maddie notices a photo of the same lady winking at her. She falls and calls out to James when she wakes up. She points at the painting of St. Bridget and how she made it all happen. They think the stress of the wedding is getting to her. But she composes herself and restarts the rehearsal, because she's excited about marrying Paul. Sean makes a brief speech at dinner, after which they all toast. Corey wants to play a game. He wants to ask three questions to the couple to determine how well they know each other. If they get the answers right, they drink shots. If they get it wrong, the others drink. The first question is about Maddie's favorite. Paul knows she likes the classics, and thinks it's Charles Dickens. Only she and James know it's James Joyce, but she claims he got it right. The second one is about their first dance, but they haven't had that yet. Paul thinks Maddie doesn't know how to dance. The last question is for Maddie about where Paul proposed. Since she has no idea how it happened in this reality, she claims it happened in a special place. James notices her hesitation, till Paul cuts her in to let them know it happened in Brooklyn on his birthday. She apparently got down on her knee and proposed to him. They dance after this, but Maddie excuses herself when her foot hurts. She overhears Olivia offering the tower suite to James so he can stay there that night. When he steps out, she follows him to ask if he's leaving already. He thinks Olivia doesn't trust him to be on time after the rehearsal, which is why she offered. Maddie thanks him for taking her to the cliff, and for everything he did after that. He wonders if she wants this wedding, because it seemed like she and Paul don't know each other well. She gets defensive, and thinks anyone could have made the mistake Paul did. He hopes she's not making a mistake too, but she doesn't think he has a right to interfere. They barely know each other, even if they spent a beautiful day together. He reminds her she's only marrying Paul because she asked him to. He thinks if she was his girlfriend, he wouldn't have waited to ask her first. She asks him to not come to the wedding, and he plans to cancel with Olivia. He plans to leave for Bolivia soon. She taunts him about running away from his own life, but feels bad she said that. Rosemary calls to inform her she got another flight and is about to board. Maddie is relieved, because she needs her mother to calm her down. There's a sudden gate change announcement, and the photo of St. Bridget flashes on the screen. Rosemary gets confused and starts heading towards the new gate in a hurry. But she bumps into St. Bridget, and trips. Maddie watches Paul enjoying with Emma. He thinks Emma could probably give Maddie some tips about dancing. He has also written Maddie's vows, because he claims to be the writer among them. 
Paul is staying at the guest room that night to avoid bad luck before the wedding. James smiles when he looks at the photos he clicked of Maddie. He checks the acknowledgement page of Paul's book, and only finds a line about Maddie being the editor. Maddie is yet to start on her own novel, but doesn't have anything to write. She gets more irritated with the email of Paul's vows. She looks out of her window to find Paul and Emma discussing the amazing night they had. When he leaves, Emma starts crying. Maddie comes out for a stroll in the morning, and asks James if he got his shot. He offers to leave her alone, but she feels bad about last night. He forgives her, because she must have a lot going on. He has read Paul's latest book, and knows it's much better than the others. He also thinks she improved it, even if she's too humble to admit it. He asks her to take credit for her own work. When she mentions she's not sure this is supposed to be her life, Paul watches them talking. James asks her to speak up if Paul isn't the one she wants to be with. She still thinks marrying him is her wish come true. Even so, she seems very sad to him. Maddie asks Heather to check if her mom has arrived, because she isn't answering her phone. The priest comes to check on Maddie, and she confesses she's done something wrong. When he learns about the wish to Saint Bridget, he can understand why she's confused. He thinks Bridget has a sense of humor. When someone asks for a wish, she gives them what they need instead of what they want. He assures her that it all works out. Maddie apologizes to Emma when she comes to meet her before the ceremony. She knows Emma and Paul have feelings for each other, and saw them on the patio. Emma admits that from the time she met Paul, she feels like they're supposed to be together. She thinks they could have been in another life, but it's too late now. She's surprised by how well Maddie is responding to this. Maddie assures Emma it's not her fault, and she plans to make things right. The groom eagerly waits for his bride as the bridesmaids walk in. Paul asks them to stop the music when Maddie enters in casual clothes. She addresses the crowd, and thinks it's time for her to speak up. She thinks Paul is a great guy, but neither of them are in love with each other. Paul thinks it's James' fault, since he saw him and Maddie together. Maddie saw Paul with Emma too, but he thinks that's irrelevant. He is determined to prove that James is trying to steal his bride. James thinks it's still better than stealing Maddie's ideas, and passing them off as his. Paul feels cornered when Maddie also claims she wrote that book. This causes a lot of chaos, and Paul starts attacking James. Maddie breaks a vase while trying to break them up, but more people get involved in the fight. Rosemary calls from the hospital and talks about her fracture. She asks about the wedding, but Maddie thinks this is very different from what she could ever imagine. She runs after James, and Emma scolds Paul for calling her irrelevant. James thinks he shouldn't have stayed in the job when he became too emotionally involved. He knows Paul was right about the fact that this could be his fault. He feels bad if he ever made Maddie doubt herself, and thinks it's best if he takes a step back. Maddie doesn't think she can be happy without him, and believes they're meant to be together. James doesn't think they can be together like this, but she stops him and kisses him. He still gets into the car and leaves after that. Maddie starts driving to the wishing chair in tears, and asks St. Bridget to take her wish back. St. Bridget can't undo the wish, because it has already been granted. Maddie agrees that she has learned her lesson and wants to live her own destiny now. But St. Bridget still disappears, leaving Maddie to figure this out on her own. Maddie tries to summon some wind and concentrates to wish that her wish is taken back. She finds herself back in the room. There's no one in her shower, and Heather comes looking for her. She realizes she is attending Paul and Emma's wedding as a bridesmaid. Her mom's foot is also fine, and she's very relieved. After Paul and Emma's wedding, Maddie pats on the photographer's shoulder. She thinks it's James, but it turns out to be someone else. Heather can tell Corey is not interested in her, and tries to move on. Emma is grateful to Maddie, because she introduced him to Paul. Maddie congratulates Paul, and he's excited to discuss business with her. His publisher wants a sequel right away. He's going to his honeymoon, and asks Maddie to start on the story without him. She asks if she'll get co-writing credit, but Paul doesn't think it works like that. He wants the book to sell in his name. But Maddie refuses his offer, and asks him to work alone on his book. She finds Murphy at the bar and asks for James. He just left, but Murphy thinks she can still find him. Maddie asks to join James on the bench, and he makes the same joke about her stealing his bag. She asks for his advice as a nature photographer. She claims to be doing research on the same lizard he is about to photograph in Bolivia. James has turned down that offer, because a woman convinced him to stay back for a while. St. Bridget walks out after realizing her work is done. Maddie is planning to stick around, and wants to write a book on the cliffs of Mohar. It's his favorite spot, and she asks if they can go there sometime. James mentions a pub he wants to take her to. She asks about things she already knows are there in the pub, and claims she had a feeling about it. 